we're becoming increasingly aware that contemporary careers are changing. Now Cranfield is taking a leading role in a consortium that's taking a global look at this issue. Now to help me in the studio today to explore this issue is Michael Dickman and Emma Parry. Now Michael, let's first of all say a bit more about the consortium that you're involved in and what it's about. The consortium is called 5C, the Collaboration for the Cross-Cultural Study of Contemporary Careers. It was set up because we realized that there is incredibly few studies around uh, issues that compare careers in different countries. So what we're doing is we're systematically <coughs> looking at uh, perceptions of career success and transition and how they come about and some of the outcomes of uh, these uh, career success issues uh, around the world. So Emma, let's have a look at uh, where we've got to so far. You're one of the co-directors with Michael of the survey phase, but let's see where things are now. The collaboration's been in existence for probably three or four years now, um, and during that time we've done quite extensive research around, um, in around 12 countries to start with, um, looking at what, how people actually conceptualise career success, the career transitions that they make, and the factors that affect those. So this has been quite large-scale qualitative research, um, we've looked at three groups of occupations, those being nurses, blue-collar workers um, and managers. Um, and then we've looked at two different age groups, people that have just started their careers, so a younger age group, and people that have nearly finished their careers, if you like, so people in their 50s and beyond. And really asked them some qu questions around their careers to date, how they conceptualise career success, to try and build a picture of how this differs across countries and age groups. Now, Michael, uh, there's some themes coming out of this. Where, where are we heading with it? Um, we're heading with this picture, as Emma said, uh, to understand some of the commonalities around the world and some issues and areas where career perceptions differ. I think it's important to point out how unique this research actually is. We are operating in uh, six continents in the U well in North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia and Australia. And we cover the key uh, economies, if you want to call it that. So we, ha we would have in North America, for example, Canada, the US, Mexico. In uh, Asia, we would cover China, Japan, Turkey, Malaysia. Um, in Europe, a whole range of country countries. What we found is that um, some of the uh, research input or output that we already know in terms of personality is important for careers is being verified by us. Uh, we know now that in countries where we didn't have the information that the self-directed careers and the individual as a master of his or her career um, is a trend that looks to be worldwide. But we also know that in certain uh, countries, uh, the context is different and therefore um, individuals and organizations behave differently uh, which with important re um, ramification for uh, approaches in careers. Now Emma, I think you've got a very interesting example of how national context can affect perceptions of careers. Yeah, I think if we take career success for instance, so how people conceptualize career success, now we see there are some commonalities across countries. So people, um, career success is always really about the person, so either about job satisfaction or making a difference, something like that, um, or it's about the job, so the actual content of the job, um, or it's about interaction with the environment, so about work-life balance or actually the interaction that they're having which go are going on them. So for instance, what we see is that at one level there's a lots of commonality. So for instance, Financial outcomes are important to everyone, but what we see is in the Western world, um, that's about buying things. It's about having a lot of money, if you like, perhaps, and actually earning a decent wage. Whereas in the developing world, it becomes more about looking after your family and about financial survival. 
So why at one level it's all about finances, at another level actually in the detail there's some differences there. Interesting. So Michael, let's come back to uh, some outputs so far. What else have you found? Well, um, while we look at country differences, developing world, uh, developed world, we also looked at occupational differences. And uh, within our three areas of nurses, blue collar workers and managers and, uh, uh, and graduates of uh, business schools, um, we found, for example, that managers um, pay most, it's most important for managers uh, the work life balance compared to the other uh, occupations. Um, we have some explanations uh, attached to it. Depend, uh, they relate to um, how you can shut out work when you go home, uh, how you uh, work with your brains uh, and uh, your, um, it, it's a mental work and therefore you cannot. Um, but that would mean that these occupational differences actually have an impact on how organizations should um, develop their human resource management to um, take care of those. So we're at an early stage in this. Can you describe where this is heading next? We, we internally call it the second phase. And what we've done so far was qualitative research. We're now entering a survey phase. This is led by Emma and me here in Cranfield, uh, where we will look at over 30 countries and really, in essence, create a picture of career success, the outcomes associated with career success, the inputs to career success, uh, and if you want to call it, we, we will put together a world map that will um, mirror the commonalities and the differences. This would be tremendously important for uh, individuals to understand uh, their uh, context better, for organizations how to manage careers better, because one of the messages we got uh, from the first phase is that organizations, um, despite the fact that the individuals are the masters of their careers, they are delivering the context and they still have to actively manage their careers. And ultimately, it will give us really good insights into uh, global trends, regional trends, local trends, which complements our work here around global careers, human resource management, national and, interna and international, multinational corporations, and uh, expatriation. Now, some good news, you've already produced some output in, in the form of a book. Can you describe that? Yes, the book is called Careers Around the World. It has just been published, uh, 2012 is the official publication date. Uh, we're looking at individual perspectives in these different countries, but also as, at their context. And that is the occupational context, it's the national context and so on. We mentioned some of the, the outputs, but it's, it's an incredibly rich document uh, and therefore it's well worth a read. That's good news. Michael, Emma, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.